driver impression of one of the cars in a Zeta Corsa Competizione and it's actually at the moment one of my favorite cars the Aston Martin Vantage V8 GT3 well yeah just look at it uh, look at the lines it's it's basically a very British very brutal brutish sports car has massive more aero uh, compared with the V12 version uh, big diffuser as you can see big spoiler big wing and on the front uh, big gaps where the air is let through um, from on the side of the engine of the uh, car um, let's go racing let's go see let's go test it as always I'm going to pull the car because it has a mix of very fast sweeping corners and also very slow corners and a very long uh, straight so you can measure uh, the top speed and what I will also do is get a basic aggressive setup change nothing except oh, I'm not gonna change anything this is it as a base to use Green light, green light. Go, go, go. First of all, what you notice in this car is the fuels are quite okay. And I, what I like in the features are those uh, lines uh, in the middle of the of the, the windshield for some, uh, some some strength, some some uh, stiffness, and also the single wiper. And the single wiper moves in the motion of the wind. Um, I love that. I love that that small detailing on it. The dash is clear, for me at least. You see all the kinds of uh, stuff that you set up, like the traction control, like the wiper settings, ABS, and basic times and uh, pressure on the tires. What's also to me quite relevant is the amount of rear view. You have the two side mirrors, you have the inner mirror, and you have the camera. Meaning that you can have a very good overview of other cars around. And of course, the sound. I love the sound. You have to get accustomed to it. As it's, well, it's such a low rumble. So when you're people are used to higher refs, higher sounds, you think like, okay, when do I have to shift, you know, you shift in the air, at the moment this is the car I like driving the most, in uh, multiple sessions or online races, offline championship, and I'll tell you why, in my opinion, the Aston Martin V8 has the best mid-corner stability. So I'm not a steer, oversteer, mid-corner. Meaning that it's a very forgiving, stable car to drive. It is a full of car, so as you can see, you can easily understeer it if you overdrive it. It will be rewarding. As it's a full bench car, it can also handle some more curbing than the mid and rear engine cars. It rewards a bit of hustle, so to say. that's lacking in the 
lost a lot of days. Stork. Horsepower is enough, speed enough, but acceleration is lacking. So getting out of corners in second. Uh, basically a no-no. Use first because you need all the acceleration that you can have. I think it's one of the worst accelerating cars. But then again, on the slow speeds and the mid-speeds is a very good engine and you still get that, that top of 278 to 80 kilometers an hour on the straights. Very fast here. Tends to understeer a bit as it's a full engine car entering a corner. In a corner, no hassles. You're driving by the front wheel by the brake. And exiting the corner, if you're not doing anything stupid, it won't oversteer on you. What's also important for longer races is fuel mileage. Aston has quite a bit of fuel mileage, meaning that you can take less fuel with you on a stint or stint longer, whatever the rules of the race apply. And it helps, strategically, it helps a lot. And also, it means that you can go on the highest engine setting any time, it doesn't matter. I think most cars can, I, the only thing, car I do know that has limits on it is the Mercedes and the AMG. AMG can't ride the AMG on the highest engine setting for an hour. You just don't want to have fuel for it. It's that first. Aston does not have the problem. I don't know the other way around. From a beginner standpoint, this is a very good car, and for me at least, it also meshes perfectly with my uh, how I like to handle a car, how I like to handle a car to feel. So both a GT4 and a GT3, this is my go-to car at the moment. Sudden changes of heart in its characteristics of driving. That means that it's stable, that means that it's comfortable, that means that it's predictable. And that means that driving it is basically a joy. Some people will say it's boring because of that. Well, if that's the case, then I like boring. That boring is fine.
another coming into time, so that's at a little bit. 59.7. At this point, I will go back to the replay and watch this lap from the outside. I love this engine sound, that roar, that rumble. That if colors could have a, if sound could have a color, this would be brown. <laughs> And you can see how stable it is on the road. It doesn't twitch, it doesn't buffet, it doesn't do anything out of the ordinary. It's it's just a big British race car. Also maybe a pointer there. As it's big, it feels big. So I'm used to it, I'm accustomed to it, but the, there are more nimbler cars as well. So the nimbler cars tend to steer more directly. The S and S, you have the tendency to steer just a bit earlier than you would normally do to coax it into a corner. This is to be expected with a front-engine drive car. Front-engine car, sorry, not drive. Um, but I find it more noticeable than, for instance, with the Bentley, which is also a big uh, front-engine car. But like I said, for me this, this car is, is a dream at the moment. It's uh, it's doing, it's meshing with me how I like to drive. So this is kind of personal, highly subjective. But a lot of fun for me in races. And she's a looker. Oh, well, we have one, but we want more. Final corner, slow, and accelerate out. This was my car impression of the Aston Martin Vantage V8 GT3. Um, and I think I'll do all the front engine cars first, and then move from mid to rears. And also given their age, the oldest to new, something like that. It is my plan to uh, do an impression on all cars in Assetto Corsa, Competizione, uh, GT3 and GT4 and Cup and Super Trofeo and everything is in there. And if you manage to see this this weekend, this weekend the whole game is free to play so on Steam. So if you haven't seen that already, haven't picked it up already, do so. You'll like it. I'll, I'll prom I promise you that. Thanks for watching. See you next time.